everyone. Oh my gosh, what a blessing to see all of you on this Sunday morning. Um, greetings to all our family on Zoom. Can we turn and wave to all our family on Zoom? Good to have everyone on Zoom with us. Good to have all of us here in the sanctuary together on this Sunday. Welcome to this time of worship with our church, the Jazz and Justice Church. If I have not yet had a chance to meet you, I'm Reverend Marjorie Matthews and... I'm Reverend Jean Jeffress. Is it on Pastor and Jean? I'm not sure my microphone's working. Do you want, my, you want this one? We'll just go with this one for now. So I'm Reverend Jean Jeffress. We serve as the pastors of this beloved, fabulous community. So we have a full and wonderful service today. We are welcoming three new members. Amen, amen, amen. So we're going to step right into this time of worship with our opening hymn, Come, O Fount of Every Blessing. The words are in your bulletin, so let's rise as we are able and sing this song. Come, O Fount of Every Blessing. Tune my heart to sing your grace. Streams of mercy never ceasing call for songs of endless praise. Teach me this song, melodious sonnet, sung by flaming tongues above. Praise the mount, I'm fixed upon it, mount of God's unfailing love. Here I pause in my sojourning, giving thanks for having come, come to trust at every turning. God will guide me safely home. Jesus has taught me when a stranger Wandering from the fold of God Came to rescue me from danger Blessed body, precious blood Oh, to grace, how great a debtor Daily I am drawn anew let this grace now, like a fetter, bind my wandering heart to you. Prone to wander, I can feel it. Wander from the love I've known. Here's my heart, oh, take and seal it. Seal it for your very own. Yes, an old hymn. So with that settling into your heart, I invite you to settle in now. Our opening prayer this morning is from Psalm 99. And before we lift the prayer, you may want to take a moment just to put a gentle hand on yourself. Maybe... Give your attention to your breathing. Feel yourself breathe in and breathe out. If you're a person who likes to close your eyes when you pray, you're welcome to do that. And let us join our hearts now in prayer. Fount of every blessing. You who love justice, you who establish equity. Your word can be heard in all the land, inviting the nations to live in peace. Listen, O oh you people. Open your hearts to the beloved, 
that truth may be born anew. Many who've gone before us have followed the Beloved's voice, all those unknown saints of all generations. They surrendered themselves into God's hands and walked with trust in the holy. They were guided through difficult times, keeping to love's way and trusting in love's promises. Remembering this, we sing praises to our God, saying, Holy are you, O giver of life. Can you all say that with me? Holy are you, O giver of life. With this prayer in our hearts, let us claim once again the wisdom of Psalm 46. I invite you to repeat each line after me. Be still and know that God is God. Be still and know that God is. Be still and know that God is. Be still and know. Be still and know. Be still. Be still. Be. Be. would usually rise and sing a congregational song or a choir song at this point. It's a very full service today, so we're going to go straight to passing the peace, everyone. Amen? And we get to have both of our worship co-chairs up here today introducing the passing of the peace. Hi, Hillary. Hi, Lauren. <laughs> Greetings, Plymouth family. Will you please join me now as we claim anew those words that are so precious to us in our denomination, the United Church of Christ. No matter who you are or where you are on life's journey, you are welcome here. In that spirit of welcome, I invite you first to pass the peace to yourself, laying a gentle hand and saying, peace be with me. And now I invite you to pass the peace to everyone who's gathered and joined us in this time of worship, worship extending your hands and saying, peace be with you. Peace be with you. If you're worshiping with us for the first or second time today, I'd like to extend an especially warm welcome to you on behalf of our Plymouth family. For those who are here in the sanctuary, I invite you to find a welcome card. It looks like this. This is a place where you can put your contact information if you'd like our pastoral staff to reach out to you. If you, see, if you feel so led, you can fill out that card, and you can drop it in the plate as it comes around for the offering. For those of you worshiping on Zoom, um, our wonderful Zoom host will post a, digital, a link to the digital version of that card where you can also fill it out, and Pastors Jean and Pastor Marjorie can be in touch. And now we're gonna have some time continue, to continue passing the peace to each other. If you're worshiping with us on Zoom, you'll have a few minutes to visit in small groups where you can share what's on your heart and share peace be with you, just to see how everyone's doing. And those here in the sanctuary will rise and greet each other. If you're erring on the side of caution and don't wanna hug or shake hands, you're welcome to offer elbow bumps and air hugs. God speaks through each of us. We are all messengers of the Most High. Rise now and greet each other as a messenger from God offering each other a sign of peace. You all, we have a gazillion grace notes. Pastor Jean and I will apologize up front. We will endeavor to be brief, but we have a, a gazillion grace notes. We counted them. It took, we counted them. It took 60 years. That's right. We had to take a snack break <laughs> and a nap. Okay, here we go. So, We've got lots of music lined up, thanks to the amazing David Sturdivant, everyone. So yes, yes, yes. 
So this afternoon at 3.30, right, there is a, a dance party and concert on Athol Avenue. And so our young and youngish musician friends will be there. So Skylar will be there and Kazim will be there. Those teenagers who've already played Carnegie Hall, you all, they will be there and Grammy award-winning jazz violinist Mads Tolling will be there. So be there or be square, bring your dancing shoes and your favorite dance partner, and come on over to the party this afternoon, 3.30. David has postcards. Yeah, actually, I only have one. Oh, you don't have? People can take a picture of it. After. Oh, so you can take a picture of the one postcard that David has. Where is it, David? Okay. Tell him, tell us 341 again. Athol Avenue. Write that down. Okay, so we're going to push forward because we have a gazillion grace notes. Um, tomorrow at 7 o'clock in the Fireside Room, Monday Night Jazz, featuring our dear friend and favorite jazz bass player, Aaron Germain. 7 o'clock, Fireside Room tomorrow, Monday Night Jazz. Again, be there or be square. Community meals, we have now wrapped up our wonderful community meals. Raise your hand if you attended a community meal in person or on Zoom. Yay, look at, well go Plymouth people. Thank you all for joining community meals, for bringing good food and yes. great ideas and wonderful questions and honest feedback. We will, um, we're gonna try to summarize and synthesize all the information from the community meals and then find a way to share that with everyone. But in the meanwhile, um, can we please thank all of our hosts and facilitators? If you hosted or facilitated a meal, will you stand up please? all the hosts and facilitators. Yay! <laughs> and I know we have some hosts and facilitators on Zoom. Thank you all. And finally, Susan Stoddard Phillips, will you stand again? Can we thank Susan? Stop, stop shaking your head. And, and Mary Vertulfo in absentia. Susan and Mary were just like rock stars on coordinating the community meals. Thank you, thank you both. Okay, last one for me, and then I'll turn it over to Pastor Gene. Next Sunday is Pride Sunday. And if you've ever been here for Pride Sunday, you know, we really, we have fun on Pride Sunday. So if you, like me, have reached the age that going over to San Francisco Pride and being in a big crowd is just way too much for you. Have you reached that age? It's too much for me. Years ago. Okay, years ago. Okay, so you're an old pastor and not quite old pastor. Too much for us going to San Francisco. But we are going to have our annual pride service. Our annual pride service ends with a dance party. After the dance party, we are having pizza. And then after the pizza, we are having a benefit concert for Lady Bianca. It'll be out here in the courtyard. Our friend Donna Viscuso and her band, 41 Street Ensemble, will be the featured artists. And the concert is free. You don't pay anything, but we hope you'll make a donation. All donations go to our dear, beloved Lady Bianca. Amen? Yes. Definitely be there, be square. Okay, Pastor Jean. Oh, you have your mic. So we, as a church, are going to, um, or some of us, and everyone is invited um, to go view a new documentary about the Palestinian people and their decades-long struggle. Um, the documentary is titled Where the Olive Trees Weep, mm -hmm. and it's premiering worldwide, and there will be a screening at our own Grand Lake Theater, Tuesday, June 25th. Um, it's at 3.30. Um, the tickets are $30, and because of, um, this is a fundraiser, so, you know, they want to raise some funds, and several folks in our congregation have already gotten their tickets, and if you'd like to attend, but $30 is a bit cost prohibitive, we, the church has bought five tickets. So one of those is claimed, so we have four more. Uh, if you, and I will be there, so um, let me know, and when you get there, I'll give you your ticket. Or I think they're, they're printed. Um, so we, we have the printed tickets? Yes, Jeanette, God bless you, Jeanette. So if you want a ticket, see Pastor yes. Jean after church and grab one of the tickets. Yes. That will be Tuesday, uh, June 25th at 3.30 at the Grand Lake. 
And then last but not least at all, um, we are looking for some sewers. And I know we have some. Um, Pastor Marjorie and I are planning some fun summer activities, some community nights, and we'll share more information. But for, for now, those of you uh, who would like to join me in making our own DIY labyrinth for our church that we can have for our own rituals, um, y'all don't want to buy a labyrinth. It's, it's co things cost to be about cost, cost, about prohibitive. cost prohibitive. So we're going to make one. Um, so I need some sewers to get with me and sew some cloth together, and then we'll paint it together and it'll be so great and then so we'll do that and it needs to be done by um, the end of next month so there'll be more information about when we'll gather and all that but in the meantime if you'd like to do that please uh, see me contact me email me text me it will be fun amen we know we have lots of sewers and quilters in this congregation we won't like call you out but help Not yet. help <laughs> As we get more desperate, we may. <laughs> Amen. Okay, that's the gazillion grace notes. Amen. Guess what? We get to welcome new members now. Amen. We get to welcome new members. So I'm going to invite our new members. I'm going to invite JC and Cheryl and Christopher to come up here and invite our moderator, Darren, to come up here with Pastor Jean and me. Yay! <laughs> you okay coming up here on the, on the steps? Come on up here, Christopher. All right. Okay. So here's what we'll do. We're going to introduce our new members just briefly, and then Pastor Jean will lead us through the questions of covenant, and then our moderator, Darren, will lead us through the community pledge. Okay. So you'll need your bulletin at that point, but not before. I'm going to come on this side because I get to introduce JC and Indigo. So Plymouth family, this is JC and this is Indigo. And um, JC is from Houston, Texas, but now considers the East Bay to be home. She was raised in the Southern Baptist tradition, but her spiritual journey has taken her lots of places, and she's often enjoyed worshiping with UCC churches. JC is a graphic designer and also loves quilting. Quilting! <laughs> Painting. Did you note that, Pastor Jean? <laughs> Gardening, camping, cooking, and reading. Um, how did she find Plymouth? She drove by, got curious, and decided to visit. And JC says she appreciates the beautiful diversity of Plymouth and the way she gets to meet people she might not otherwise get to know. We are so glad you're part of this beautiful diversity, JC and Indigo. Is it a good book, Indigo? It has wheels. Is it about things that move? Choo-choo trains. Choo-choo trains. Oh, amen and ashe. Welcome, JC and Indigo. <laughs> And now I get to come over here by Cheryl. So I'm going to switch places with you, JC and Indigo. All right. So everyone, this is our dear Cheryl. Cheryl is from Chicago and moved here to the East Bay about a year and a half ago. Uh, she was raised in the Catholic faith, but now considers herself simply a follower of Jesus. Amen. She spent many years working in the hospitality business and then went to nursing school and became a hospice nurse. Cheryl is the proud mom of three adult children and the proud grandma of five beautiful grandchildren. She enjoys dancing, traveling, watching movies, and spending time with her dear family. Last year, she met Plymouth members Patricia Granberry and Patricia's wife Arlette on a cruise. And they're such good evangelists, they were evangelizing on the cruise. So <laughs> I think you and Arlette win Evangelist of the Year Award. Um, so, so Patricia and Arlette invited Cheryl to Monday night jazz and to church and to the front porch and the rest, as they say, is history. Thanks, Patricia and Arlette. Cheryl says that Plymouth feels like home. And so I'm going to say to you what Welda Murphy, one of our longtime members, said to me on my first Sunday at Plymouth, welcome home. 
Pastor Jean is going to introduce Christopher. And let me hand you the binder, Pastor Jean. Okay. Plymouth family, this is Christopher Martinez, um, who's been working with us for a good many months now. So I'm sure that some of you, uh, many of you, have already met him. Uh, yeah. Christopher grew up in the Hudson River Valley in New York and was raised Episcopalian. Um, his, his, he is a social worker by profession, and he also has many hobbies and interests like hiking and camping, tai chi and yoga, creative writing, and playing the guitar. He was introduced to Plymouth by a friend, and he says that he feels very blessed by being part of this community, that he often finds himself moved to tears on Sunday mornings here at Plymouth. Well, you can join Marjorie. In that. <laughs> I'll share my box of you're tissues in, with you. You're in good company. Um, we thank God and we feel blessed that you're here, Christopher. So now I'm going to go ahead and uh, invite us to join in covenant. With gratitude in our hearts, we invite you, new members, to join us as we celebrate God's presence, live with respect in creation, love and serve others, seek justice and resist evil. With gratitude in our hearts, we invite you to participate in the life and mission of this family of God's people, sharing regularly in the worship of God and supporting our ministries, the ministries of Plymouth Church as we serve our community and our world. If you are willing to join us with this, in, us in this mission and ministry, then I invite you to respond by um, saying, I will with God's help. I will with God's help. Amen. All new members, oh, uh, that was your part. Amen. <laughs> <laughs> and now we come to Darren. All right. here. The church is a community of people with varied gifts, united by the Holy Spirit, following in the way of Jesus, and building the kingdom of God. With gratitude and rejoicing, we welcome you, Christopher, Cheryl, and JC, to this beloved community, Plymouth Church, and to our denomination, the United Church of Christ. Welcome. And now, Plymouth community, I invite you to join me as we pledge our care and support to our new members. The words are in the bulletin. As, as your, your family, family in Christ, Christ we, we rejoice in the gifts, gifts you bring to us. We, we pledge to you our love and support, and we pray that all of us together will live out the mission and ministry of Christ's church. Amen. Amen. We wel let's welcome our new members with applause. Oh, what a joy. Welcome, welcome to our new members. We are going to transition now to prayer time. And um, there's a wonderful song by Christopher Grundy. It's called Invocation. And um, Damon is going to play that for us. And I invite you just to receive it 
prayerfully. The words are in your bulletin, so that's for later. For now, just close your eyes, maybe, and receive this beautiful invocation. Hear us, God, for we are praying. Hear us, God, for we are laughing in our joy. Hear us, God, for we are crying out to you, wondering what will be, what will be. Speak to us, God, for we are listening. Speak to us, God, for we are waiting for your voice. Speak to us, God, in our hearts and all around. Tell us what can be, what can be. We come to you in prayer now, Holy One, trusting and believing that you hear us when we pray. And you speak to our hearts when we quiet ourselves to hear you. So speak to our hearts this day, O God, and show us what can be, what can be. Hear now the prayers of your beloved people. If you are here in the sanctuary and you have a prayer that you want to lift aloud, just raise your hand and I'll bring the microphone to you. We'll receive three or four prayers here in the sanctuary. If you're with us on Zoom, you're welcome to write your prayers in the chat on Zoom and I will share a few of those when I come around. What are our prayers this day? I have a prayer for our community. Um, in June, in Juneteenth celebration at the lake, there were 14 people shot, and yet in the media it was overshadowed by the scandals with, concerning the mayor and government of our city. My prayers are for the city of Oakland and such a beautiful place and such a mess all at once. Holy God, receive our prayers for our beloved city of Oakland. Holy Spirit, just a profound prayer of gratitude for, uh, for my family and for the week that we spent together, my brother and 16 of his children and grandchildren and their spouses and myself on a cruise to Alaska and such a loving family. I feel so blessed for them. Thank you. Amen. God, in your grace, receive our grateful prayer. Lord, I am grateful in, with all the mess that my sister friend, my new sister friend, has joined the Plymouth family. It, it, it fills my heart with joy. I'm just grateful that even in all the awfulness that happens that you can find some joy. God of grace, receive our grateful prayer. Maybe one more, Darren. Dear God, please, please, please keep up your healing touch for my mother in uh, movements big and small. Um, every increment helps. Mm -hmm. God of love and healing power, receive our prayer. And from our family with us on Zoom today, from Laura Easley, Holy One, please help my surgery on Friday go well. 
Help them find and remove all that's causing the pain. Thank you so much for the overwhelming support from those in the church who are sheltering us, feeding us, and caring for Adeo and Ario during this surgery and recovery. God of healing and God of hope, receive our prayer. And from Elizabeth Hazeshack, I want to lift up my nephew-in-law, Will, who is hospitalized as his healthcare team works to get his condition under control. God of healing and mercy, hear our prayer. From Susan Salverson, prayers for housing for the homeless. God of justice, hear our prayer. From John Oberholzer Dent, gratitude for the community meals and the outlook for a community-wide discernment process. We are walking with God's power together. Amen, amen. Holy God, receive our prayer. And one last one from Christine Harris. Dear God, please be with Sheila Baisley, who has visited our church, is a dear friend of our church, but has been dealing with serious health challenges that have kept her from joining us for at least six weeks now. God of healing, receive our prayer. We are going to continue in prayer now. As many of you know, I often prefer praying with gestures and using our bodies rather than using words. So we're going to do our body prayer that we often do. And I need a mic stand. Maybe I'll just stay up here, Pastor Jean. Okay, so some of you know this already, and you can do this prayer seated or standing. If you feel that you'd like to stand, you're welcome to do that. Family on Zoom, you can do this seated or standing. So we've heard many prayers this day. And some of our prayers we've just tucked in our hearts, right? Whether it was spoken aloud or kept in your heart or lifted on Zoom, I invite you to Imagine that you are gathering up all the prayers, just gently scooping those prayers up and then lifting those prayers to our God. And then open your arms and let God's grace just rain down on you and bring that grace to your heart. And then send that grace back out into the world, go whew, so we're going to do that a couple more times. So we're going to gather up the prayers, gather them, gather them. We're going to lift them to our God. We're going to open our arms to receive God's grace and let that grace just rain down on us. Bring it to our hearts, touch your heart, and then whew, Send it back out into the world. And we'll do that a couple of times now, just in silence, okay? And continuing now in prayer, I invite you, if you feel comfortable doing so, put one hand on yourself and join hands with someone nearby. And we're going to join our hearts and voices in the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Creator God, who is in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. 
Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. 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 <coughs> As we prayed, I was looking up, you all, and noticed the water stains on our ceiling. I often do that. A couple years ago, I was sitting in this sanctuary with Terry O'Davi's great niece and great nephew. And their grandma was saying, oh, it's such a beautiful sanctuary. And I said, yeah, it's home, but oh, those water stains on the ceiling. And the children said, oh, Pastor Marjorie, those are not water stains. Those are ceiling angels. <laughs> Can't you see the wings? Can't you see the head? Hello, ceiling angels. Oh, God. It's a miracle. Two more miracles we're going to have to sing. Mm. Mm. Dave, I'll say, okay. <laughs> <laughs> reading today is from Ecclesiastes, chapter 3, verses 1 through 8. Hear now these words. For everything there is a season, and a time for every matter under heaven, a time to be born and a time to die, a time to plant and a time to pluck up what is planted, a time to kill and a time to heal, a time to break down and a time to build up a time to weep and a time to laugh, a time to mourn and a time to dance, a time to throw away stones and a time to gather stones together, a time to embrace and a time to refrain from embracing, a time to seek and a time to lose, a time to keep and a time to throw away, a time to tear and a time to sow, a time to keep silent, and a time to speak, a time to love, and a time to hate, a time for war, and a time for peace. Here ends the reading.
with the words of words of wisdom. on now okay maybe it needs to come a little closer okay there we go good morning church it's so good to see everybody today and have new members join and see some new people that we haven't met and some friends from seminary and just everybody's here so lovely will you pray with me Holy One, we thank you for this gathered community. We thank you for this gorgeous day. We thank you for all you have done and that you will do. You ask, we ask you to be with us now. May these words from my mouth be pleasing to you, God, who is our rock and our redeemer. Amen. So the words from today's passage were made famous by a 1959 song by the birds called Turn, Turn, Turn. To everything turn, turn, turn. There is a season turn, turn, turn. And a time to every purpose under heaven. Anyway, that's right, all of that. Um, Pete Seeger said he made a lot of money, he only wrote one word. <laughs> and I learned that from, um, where, where, where is she? For, for, from, from Kate in Bible study, because you know, Kate looks everything up, so. So trust me though, the song is way more famous than the book of the Bible from which it comes. And I was reading, as I was reading the book of Ecclesiastes, I was thinking it would be easy for many people to mistake a parts of Ecclesiastes for Shakespeare. Check this out. This is the beginning of Ecclesiastes chapter one from the King James Version. Vanity of vanities, said the preacher, saith the preacher. Vanity of vanities, all is vanity. What profit hath a man of all his labor, which he taketh under the sun? One generation passeth away, and another generation cometh, but the earth abideth forever. All the rivers run into the sea, yet the sea is not full, unto the place from whence the rivers come, thither, they return again. All things are, f are full of labor. Man cannot utter it. The eye is not satisfied with seeing, nor the ear filled with hearing. The thing that hath been, it is that which shall be, and that which is done is that which shall be done, and there is no new thing under the sun. So that could be a pub quiz, right? Shakespeare or Ecclesiastes? <laughs> we could start a new thing here. We could get a hustle going. But of course, using the King James Version is kind of cheating 
because they have all the saith and cometh and thee and thou and all that. Um, and the thither. I had to say the thither. I had to. Anyway, okay. In the Hebrew Bible, Ecclesiastes is considered wisdom literature. It's wisdom literature. There are, um, there are many genres. There's narrative, prophecy, poetry, and others. Ecclesiastes is purported to have been written by a philosopher or a teacher, somebody who's wise in, in, in any case and, and can bestow wisdom. In chapter two in Ecclesiastes, it seems to have been written by um, a king, King Solomon actually, or probably more likely attributed to King Solomon, the son of King David, in case you were wondering who he was. And King Solomon was somebody who was thought to be wise. There was the story, if you recall, of the two women who come to King Solomon, each with a child. One, the child, one child is alive and one has died. And they're, they're fighting, saying that the one child who's alive is theirs. It's my child, it's my child, it's my child. So King Solomon says, the child in half, and then give each half. And then the one who was the mother said, no, no, don't do that. Just give the child to the other woman, and that's how he knew. So that's, that's how part, you know, that's the, 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 um, the, the tradition of King Solomon's wisdom. So leading up to, to, to today's eight verses in Ecclesiastes, which, by the way, the Jewish study Bible refers to as the catalog of polarities, which I just love, the catalog of polarities. Um, it sounds like a, a good, um, like a band, the catalog of polarities. But anyway, okay, so leading up to these eight verses, we are told about King Solomon's fabulous accumulation of wealth and luxuries and indulgences, like everything we can imagine, food and houses and women and booze and people waiting on him hand and foot and flocks and herds and fields and fields of land. He had it all. He had it all. But all of this, he said, after he pontificated endlessly about it, is all is vanity and chasing wind. And he says that because he realizes that in accumulating all this wealth, he was obsessed with trying to maintain it. And he hated the fact that when he died, he could not take it with him and would have to probably leave it to someone who didn't earn it. He was very irked by that. In essence, he could not enjoy his life. He could not enjoy his life. So right before today's eight verses, King Sol Solomon finally says, there is nothing better for people to do than to eat and drink and find joy in their toil. This also, I saw, is from the hand of God. And toil, it sounds terrible, but it's actually simply the long, hard work of being alive. That's our toil, the long, hard, beautiful, everything work of being alive. And it is a gift. It is a gift. So after this long-winded, and I read the whole thing because you know me, this long-winded description of the king's indulgences, striving to have everything, having everything, then realizing that he did not have joy, we come to those poetic verses about everything having a season and a time. These verses are a letting go, in a way. When our carefully planned and curated lives don't work out, when all the stuff of life, the achievements and material success turn out to be not the thing, we have God. We have each other and we have the seasons. Somebody asked me, aren't these verses just saying we should just accept, you know, whatever is going on and we don't, you know, we don't, ha we don't have to do anything about it because there's a season for everything, so, you know, like, we can just wait around for the next season or something? And, I, you know, I get it. I can see how that would be, like, sort of a, um, 
what do I, what do I always say? Lazy theology, a lazy theological way of looking at it. But I have a different interpretation. This reminds me of my longtime relationship to the serenity prayer. How many of you know the serenity prayer? God grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change, the courage to change the things I can, and the wisdom to know the difference. We say it in 12-step meetings. For years, years, I thought, great, I just have to accept terrible things. I just have to sit there and be fine with it all because there's nothing I can do. Wonderful. So after about 24 and a half years, I'm not even kidding, I heard the second part of the prayer, the courage to change the things I can. The serenity prayer is about our own agency. It's about shifting our focus because we can sit, and I don't know about y'all, but I can sit, and I do, and stare at all the things over which I have no control, which is pretty much everything, <laughs> and be mad about it, or we can shift our focus, you know, just, just shift. And that doesn't mean that all that stuff is going away or it's going to get better. But there's always something we can do. We can look at the things that we can do something about. We can take care of our friends and family, and we can take care of our communities, and we can stand up and show up for people who are experiencing injustice, and we can stand up and show up and speak up, call the DA, all that kind of stuff. <laughs> that sometimes you got to do. That's what it's about. These eight verses, that's what I think. These eight verses from today's passage are not just about this season or that season. I think they're about how we attend to life in between. There is a time to be born and a time to die. Yes, but in between we live. There is a time to plant and a time to pluck up. But in between is the time to tend to the land. Yes. You don't just plant and then go expect something to be there if you didn't take care of it. Trust me, I did it. It doesn't work. <laughs> Why didn't the tomatoes grow? So, um, there is a time for breaking down and a time for building up. But in between... We gather in our community. There is a time for weeping and mourning and laughing and dancing, but in between we grieve because we have to acknowledge what we have loved and lost. There's no pass go on grieving. Sorry. There is a time for war and a time for peace, but it's always time to protest. These eight verses are about tending to the life we have been given. I was recently at our conference's annual gathering where churches from our, the whole northern California, Nevada region meet up. And this year we met in Fresno and it was really hot. That's not what I'm trying to say, but I always have to tell people that I survived the heat. The theme of the gathering was, God is doing a new thing, from Isaiah 43. Behold, I am doing a new thing, now it springs forth. Do you not perceive it? And Reverend Simon Baisel Moshefri, who is the pastor of the Fresno Church, he preached on that passage in, one of our, in our opening worship, and he said something like, I'm going to paraphrase, but he said, I can't tell you how many church meetings and conferences I have been to where people are all fired up saying, God's doing a new thing and we're going to do something new and God's doing a new thing with us. And then they go and they do the old thing. <laughs> and he talked about how many churches, you know, long for the often bygone heyday of the full pews and the big budgets. We have pretty full pews today, I gotta say. And then he, he said something like, 
Maybe trying to maintain those full pews and big budgets distracted us from doing some of the deep work of community building within and outside of the church. And then Reverend Simon said something like, I have good news for you. We don't have full pews and big budgets anymore. <laughs> so we don't have that distraction anymore. Now we can do the deep work of building community and doing justice. God bless Reverend Simon. He was like a mic dropper, that guy. <laughs> what can we do but to find joy in the church that God has given us? Living in capitalism as we do, our model of success is expansion and growth, both in numbers and finance, forever. In capitalism, economies must grow or they collapse. So they need more and more resources, which destroys our earth and exploits people's labor. We cannot model our church after that. We cannot model our communities after that. We cannot model our lives after that. We need to be in a season of tending. We need to be in a season of deepening relationship. We need to be in a season of being interested in what we can do to serve our wider community. We need to be in a season of growing, yes, we do, and we have taken in new members, and we are so grateful. And, you know, we could certainly use a bigger budget. There's no, no lie. We're not swimming in money. That's for sure. But like I said, because like I said, we live in capitalism, so we got to have that money. But we cannot be in our mindset in this place of grow or collapse. We cannot. We cannot. Because then we cannot enjoy what we have. Yes. Because we're thinking about the heyday or we're looking to the future. And then right now is gone. But what we have is so much. We have so much. Look around. Really, I'm, I'm not joking. Look around. We have so much. For everything... There is a season and a time for every matter under heaven. At our church, it is time, we are in a time of discernment. We are considering if we will change the way we use our land and property, if we will build affordable housing, or if we will do something else. As members, we are meeting each other through the community meals that went all through June and just ended, and there are more community activities planned this summer. Lots of time to meet. As we approach our stewardship season, this com coming this later in the summer, you know, we have that to talk about and look forward to as we shift leadership roles coming up, as people will step down and other people will step up. We have a lot of gifts and time to go deep. We are in a time of growth. We are, to be sure. But we're not going to extend outward wider and wider forever and ever until we're so thin we crack. Let's grow deeper. Let's grow deeper. Let's, let's like do roots. Let's grow deeper in relationship. Strengthen our community bonds to prepare for that next season that's coming because it's coming. It's always coming. Let's go deeper. Amen. help me welcome our special guest for today. That would be me. David! So I'm going to do a song that um, some people associate with funerals. I look at it as something uplifting and uh, hopeful. And you can help me out on the chorus if you... Swing low Sweet chariot, coming for to carry me home. Swing low, sweet chariot, coming for to carry me home. 
Well, I looked over Jordan, and what did I see? Coming for to carry me home. A band of angels coming after me, coming for to carry me home. Swing low, sweet chariot, coming for to carry me home. Swing low, sweet chariot, coming for to carry me home. Now if you get to heaven before I do, coming for to carry me home. Tell all my friends I hope to be there one day too. Coming for to carry me home. Swing low, Swing low. sweet area. Coming for to carry me home. Swing low, sweet area. Coming for to carry me. I looked over Jordan, what did I see? Coming for to carry me home. A band of angels coming after me, coming for to carry me home. Swing low, swing low, sweet chariot, coming for to carry me home. Swing low, sweet chariot, coming for to carry me home. Swing low, sweet chair area, coming for to carry me home. Swing low, sweet chair area, coming for to carry me home. Very good. Wonderful. Last weekend, you all, I got to do one of my favorite things. I was on a backpacking trip in the wilderness with my child, John. For days, we roamed through the mountains, climbing to the clearest alpine lakes, hiking through meadows filled with wildflowers against cliffs that scraped the sky on all sides. And as I hiked, I marveled at the gift of nature, and I thought, God has been good to me. And my child, whom I love so much, was willing to spend this time with me. And I said to myself, God has been good to me. Yes. On our way home, my mind was still full of all of the beauty we had seen. We were passing through a tiny mining town in a very conservative part of the state. And do you know what we saw? A little white church with a tall steeple with a rainbow banner on the front that said, all are welcome. Yes, it was a UCC. I said to John, we are going to church. It was my birthday. And I said to him, God has been good to me. We had the best time at this church service. Afterward, we went to fellowship with the members of this little community who were so happy to have these guests stopping, going through town, stopping to visit with them. I felt like I came away with 10 new friends. And as we left, I said to them, God has been good to me. So look at all the ways that God has blessed me. And think away about all the ways he has blessed you. I give to Plymouth because God has been good to me.
one of the many ways that God has been good to this church is that God has blessed us with Jennifer Dent and with her beautiful child, John Overholzer Dent. Here are our wonderful greeters and ushers. Dear ones, there are many ways to give to our church. If you still carry cash or a checkbook, you may place your gift in one of the um, offering plates held by Cecilia, Ashley, or Catherine. If you give online, you can go to the back page of your bulletin and there's a QR code there. And if you're one of those folks who likes tech, you can give in that way. Glorious God, we thank you for every gift and for every giver. May it all be used to expand your kingdom and to grow deep roots of love. Amen. Amen. Let's have some lovely music while we collect the offering. On a clear day, rise and look around you. And you see who you are. On a clear day, how it will astound you. That the glow of your being outshines every star. You'll feel part of every mountain, sea, and shore. You can hear from far and near a world you have never heard before. On that clear day, on that clear day, you can see Let's rise and sing the doxology. I was just totally cheating because all I know is on a clear day, rise and look around you. The rest I was like, la, 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 la. la, la. <laughs> Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise God all creatures here below. Praise God above ye heavenly host. Creator Christ and hope. Please join me in the prayer of dedication. Through these gifts, O oh God, may we heed the voice of justice, hear the call to compassion, embrace the way of sharing, and become ever wiser stewards of all you have entrusted to us. In all your... Oh, oh shit. Did I miss the line? <laughs> Time is the line. Amen. So since we're all standing, I invite you to come out into the aisles. Maybe um, we can put those on the altar. Thank you, greeters. Come out into the aisles, everyone. And we will sing our blessing song. Are we singing the dance version? We're si oh, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. We're singing the dance version of the blessing song. Give, give, yes. Let's close the circle. Are Kathy and Tom here? We have to make up a good dance to this. All I can do is this, you all. What? Don't go where? Make up a dance. Okay. We'll just do this. May the blessings of God rest upon you. May God's peace abide with you. May God's presence illuminate your heart now and forevermore. May the blessings of God rest upon you. May God's peace abide.
Amen. Pastor Jim. Church, it's been a wonderful worship. I'm so glad that whoever wrote Ecclesiastes wrote it so that we could remember that in everything there is joy, that life is about what we experience, about how we treat each other, and less about what we believe or any kind of doctrine that will trip you up and stumble you. Mm -hmm. My first pastor said, Jesus cares, cares about what you experience, not about what you believe. And that's mm -hmm. the Jesus I follow. Mm -hmm. Cares about all of our lives. So go thither. <laughs> <laughs> and have joy in your lives and share oh. that joy abundantly with all you encounter. Amen. 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 Thank you, Pastor Gene. We, we have fellowship. Yeah. We're, we're, we have fellowship today, everyone. So if you're here, are you thithering? If you're here, <laughs> it's a verb. We're going to get t-shirts. Art thou thithering? Um, if you're here in the sanctuary, you, um, Pastor Gene and I would love to greet you at the door before you go. And then we're having fellowship time today. Family on Zoom, you'll be able to go into breakout groups to share some fellowship time. And when you come back, Dave Mayaki yeah, will bless totally. you with a jazz standard. He's going to bum um, rush the stage. Amen. Yes. Amen. Thank you all for joining in this time of worship. Go in peace. Go thither. Hi, everybody. It's a great day out there. As Ernie Banks would say, let's play two. He's my guy from Chicago. But here's a song from 1953, came out in 1954, and it's connected to Rick Woodfield, where Willie Mays got his start. Jackie Robinson was barnstorming with his team in 53 after the season, but he had a couple of star players on the team who were white. And Bull Collar, Connor, the director of public safety said, oh, no, no, they can't do that. We can't play together here. So there was this guy on leave from the army from that town named Willie Mays. And he played in that game. And the manager of the team said, we got to write a song about this, write about him. So here it is right now. The Willie Mays song, Hey Say Hey. Say hey, say hey, Willie. Say hey, swinging at the plate. Say hey, say hey, Willie. That Giants kid is great. When he hits the ball, it's long gone man. Gets it farther than Campy can. Swings the bat like a little lead pipe. When they reach the ball, it's over right. Say hey, say hey, Willie. Say hey. Oh, swinging at the plate. Say hey, say hey, Willie. That giant kid is great. He runs the bases like a choo choo train. Round second like an aeroplane. His cap flies off when he reaches third. And he heads home like an eagle bird. Say hey, hey, Willie. Say hey. Swinging at the plate. Say hey, oh, Willie. Giant's kid is great. That he is great. Well, he covers center like he had jet shoes. The other batters get the willy blues. Every hit is way is out. He don't pay that guy to cloud. Oh, he no willy. Say hey, swinging at the blade, say hey. Oh, Willie, that giant kid is great. When Willie served his Uncle Sam, he left the giants in on awful jam. Now he's back, he's Leo's joy. Willie's still a growing boy, say hey, oh, Willie. Say hey, swinging at the blade, say hey, oh, Willie, that giant kid is great. Giant's kid is great. Giant's kid is great. Say, Willie, what you gonna say? Say, hey.
Now, time to say goodbye. Now it's time to say goodbye to the Plymouth family. P-L-Y M-O-U-T-H-U-C-C Plymouth Church. Plymouth Church. We'll see you next week. Five, four, three, two, one. Mwah.